Today on BoxCaster, with Sergei Kovalov and Andre Ward, two of the best light heavyweights in the world just a couple of days away from tangling in the most anticipated fight of the year, I was able to catch up with Showtime's Al Bernstein and look back on an era when light heavyweight was perhaps the greatest any division has ever been in boxing history. Here's part one of my conversation with Hall of Famer Al Bernstein. Uh, one thing I want to talk about, and it, it, for some reason it's been intriguing me of late, when you look at maybe the, the 10 guys that, that ruled that area, you can make a case that each one could have beaten the other, with the exception of maybe Michael Spinks, who was an all-time great light heavyweight. Hey, am I overstating the quality no. that was in that oh, era? That, not... that, that era, and that'd be, you say 10, you might be able to go 12 or 13 deep of guys that were either on their either just coming into it or a little bit. I mean, you mentioned I'll throw some names out. I mean, we're talking about Matthew Saad Muhammad. We're talking about um, John Conti. We're talking about Michael Spinks, Dwight Braxton, the two Davis brothers, Yaki Lopez, John um, Scott. Yeah, there you go. Um, this and Eddie Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, who was first Eddie Gregory. I mean, Mike Rossman, who was a terrific fighter, who had a world mm-hmm. title briefly, um, or didn't, but Victor Galindez. <laughs> well, no, he, Rossman beat uh, Galindez, did he not? And then was stopped by Marvin yeah, Johnson. That's right. Marvin yeah, Johnson, yeah. there's another yeah, one. Exactly. Yeah, Marvin Johnson, who was fantastic, who always gets overlooked. Um, I mean, it was, it was the greatest. Uh, and then you go just a, a level below to people like Richie Cates, Jerry Richie. Celestine. Oh, and uh, Jerry, was it Jerry Butler, the bull, that knocked out Scott and Rawway? Right. Oh, yeah, right, exactly. Um, so, you know, there was, you can go 15 deep of fighters that at some point could have fought each other. And Michael Spinks, you mentioned. Uh, it was an amazing time for the light heavyweight. Uh, Matty Parlov, another one. Matty Parlov, exactly. You who know, lost who to Johnson, time. but was it, always. It, it, it was a ridiculous time in terms of overall talent. Uh, for that division, and the, one of the people that thought it was one of the great times was the great Gil Clancy, who said to me that, you know, when he was looking at that division, uh, that he never saw it. So, it was so great, and of course, in the late 50s, or the early 50s, and late 40s, the division was spectacular, you know, mm-hmm. when, Archie, when Archie Moore and Walcott and Ezra Charles and all those guys were in that division, as Joey Maxim, it's great, great then too. But this this rivals it. And uh, we're talking with Al Bernstein, and we're t- discussing the uh, late heavyweight era in the late seventies, early eighties. Uh, was Finks the best of the bunch? Probably. Well, here's the thing: <laughs> he kind of ended up being the only thing that would be the asterisk you put next to it is some of the people I mentioned had already kind of hit the end of their careers when he was in his prime. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they'd already been through the ringer against each other right. when he comes so up through the Olympics rather fresh. Right. We don't know which one of them, if any, would have maybe beaten him had they been at their absolute prime. That's the only asterisk you put there. But certainly he, you know, he ended up being the, I think probably the top dog of of all the the second portion of that group that that came through the you know through the uh, the mm-hmm. turnstiles and definitely um, the last man standing at the end he was the last man standing exactly and um and you can make a strong case for him being uh, the best one of the bunch and you know I I can't remember if uh, um, I've done these things for the Tom Hauser does where we we rate all the different divisions fighting each other. And I, I can't, for the life of me, I can't remember if we did the light heavyweight division. I don't think we did. Where he picks out the eight top ones and they fight each other. Oh, um, how fun that, would that be? Yeah, I know. And it's always interesting in each weight division, but I was just trying to think of the idea that picking out the eight for, uh, would be tough. But you can imagine Archie Moore being in there and Michael Spinks and Bob Foster. Um, Roy Jones. You know, Potentially, Roy Jones is certainly is a light heavyweight. Um, you know, it's 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 really interesting when you think about the light heavyweight division. But that era you're talking about, in terms of depth, the only one that would rival it, and of course I wasn't there to see it, would have been, like I say, the the 50s, the early 50s, 
late 40s, um, that kind of era. Come back tomorrow for part two of our conversation with Al in the great light heavyweight era and let us know what you thought about what Al and I had to say. Leave us your comments, criticisms, and insights, and feel free to like us and even subscribe.